Yeah. What I'm saying. But Mr. Suleiman. Yes, Joseph. What, what about this, the concerns of the safety of fighters taking these drugs and, and how it could harm them? It's, it's not always just the performance advantage, but it's the safety. That's why a prescription is required for this drug. I, I think that the regulation has to protect the fighter as well because fighters will do anything to make weight. They don't always put their, their physical health first. I, I think the safety of this drug is also an issue, not just the performance uh, part of it. You're absolutely correct. Uh, the major concern of anyone taking any sort of substance, prohibited substance or processes, is the harm that they can do to themselves. The, any substance, uh, as I said, there there's so many different ones, but substances hurt your liver, your heart, your brain, your kidneys. It is very dangerous to take and to use and to uh, manipulate anything that happens in your body. That's why we have an education program. Uh, the I don't know if you have watched this, uh, the webinar that is in, in the Clean Boxing Program site. Uh, it goes through this and we have a continuous education to the fighters and the trainers and the managers. So this is an ongoing program. And of course, the concern of anyone taking anything is they can harm themselves in a bad uh, manner. So I guess a, a fair question to, to ask right now would be moving forward. If someone does take this drug in preparation for a fight, what will the punishment be? Good question. It, it will, every single case is analyzed separately. Okay. What is the, the specific situation? How did it happen? When did it happen? What's surrounding? Uh, there's fighters who have taken supplements and they even put, put it in the, in the form. And they don't know that the most uh, common thing is the naive and ignorance of uh, the supplements or the vitamins or whatever a fighter is taking or a uh, nutritionist or a trainer is giving them. So that's our continuous process. We continuously try to make them understand there's a system, uh, a company called Access, and they can send the, the products to be certified and, they, and, and to receive guidance. So we have like a hotline where fighters can contact and, and be educated on that. And that's going to be Valdez's um, duty to educate as many as he can on uh, different things about weight management, hydration, and uh, substances. Are so, you concerned, though? Let me just get this one off, Nest. It's very important. If Are you concerned that if someone else looks at this and hears this interview, another fighter, they're going to say, well, Mr. Valdez was able to get off without being suspended. He was able and allowed to fight. Now, if I take this drug, I'll, I'll, I'll roll the dice. Maybe I can get the same treatment. And if they don't get the same treatment, you know, can you understand the criticism that will come your way if that does happen? No, I am not concerned. I am concerned for any fighter taking anything with knowledge. That, that would be a different case. And if they accept they take it, that's a different. Uh, Valdez never accepted he had taken anything. Uh, if they do it with knowledge, then it's a different uh, evaluation of that specific case. Uh, this is the first time that there has been a fentramine uh, case in the six years that we have had. Um, we are still investigating what could have been the source of the of of Valdez uh, uh, contamination or or taking. We're still investigating and will continue. He's in probation for one year. So I am not concerned if any fighter takes anything. We're gonna address it and and go through it. Same as we did with Valdez and we have done with Povetkin and we have done with Pascal and every single fighter who has tested uh, positive for any of the so uh, banned substances. Uh, just to move on, because I'm, I'm really done with the uh, negative or positive drug test, but I don't know if you know the term pre-trial intervention. 
something that's called PTI in the legal system, and you brought up felonies and things like that, and I wonder if that's kind of what the WBC adapted. It's like a first-time offender. He gets caught for whatever crime. It's not a violent crime. It's not a serious crime. So the government steps in, puts him on pretrial intervention. They have to do some sort of probation and community service, and it doesn't stay on their record, but it is a way of you know, slapping them on the wrist, teaching them their lesson. So is that kind of what you did here, where it was on the banned substance list, he he had no knowledge of it, you want to educate him so he's on a probationary period? Yeah, I, I, I was not familiar with that term, but the way you explain it, uh, I think it's a good way of putting it. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean... You, you word it perfectly, uh, the way you explain it. So Because it's kind of like a first-time offender thing, and, you know, you, you're giving them the education now. It's what it seems like. You know, he didn't know. It's the first time he ever got caught. I know Valdez said on his social media, like, he's been tested 30 times. So it feels like you gave him the benefit of the doubt. Like, uh, look, you, we've tested you 30 times. This is the first time you pop positive. We believe you, you're on this probationary period to see do you continue to test or not, right or wrong? Yeah, that's, that, that's a good way to word it. He went to two Olympics. In the Olympic Games, they have a, a certain uh, testing, of course, and then 30 VADA tests, always uh, negative. And, and he has a reputation unquestionable in gymnasiums. In I mean, anyone that uh, was contacted, they were surprised and they would vow in favor of Valdez. So that's a way, a good way that you have put it. Moving forward, I got Brandon Lenz in Houston that says, thank you for coming on, Mauricio. Do you think a mandatory passing on his shot at the champion is something that should be punishable? Like, let's say he drops 20 slots in the rankings. I think it's disrespectful to the belt and the system in place to not compete Excuse me, not complete the process. What do you think? I'm sorry, I'm not understanding very well. So a mandatory it. challenger that 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 wins an eliminator or, or wins the interim title but doesn't want to fight the champion. Obviously, he's going in circles. He's talking directly. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Jojo Diaz, two interim champions that now are instead choosing to fight each other instead of fighting the champion. Like... No one wants to fight Devin Haney. It seems so weird to us. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Devin Haney, uh, has he wants to fight Ryan Garcia. That's uh, We have spoken about that uh, thoroughly in the past. This lightweight uh, division has been extremely complicated uh, with many things happening. Uh, and the WBC, uh, Ryan Garcia had mental issues. And we expressed our support to him. So the WBC have continued the, the dragging of happenings that were from before the pandemic. So we had Fortuna and Diaz fight for the interim title because Fortuna had been in, in place with Campbell and then uh, with uh, the fights that were just falling through. So we did that to continue the process. Uh, Ryan Garcia will fight Jojo Diaz to finish that uh, that circle and then uh, the fight, the winner to fight uh, Devin Haney. Haney can do a voluntary or Haney can contract to find Jojo Diaz directly or to fight. We are giving Haney the option to, to take and choose the best uh, path that he wishes. But uh, one of the final steps is to have uh, finalized Garcia, Jojo Diaz in case that fight happens. But then the next has to be the interim champion against the champion and uh, and then try to finalize that uh, all the mayhem that went in, in the lightweight division. Uh, Mauricio, you don't think that Devin Haney being champion for, I'm going to say, two years now and not ever having a mandatory is uh, starting to look like almost shameful? Shameful to whom? to the sanctioning body. He's been there and he's not fighting any mandatory since he won the title. Like, that's the natural process. The number one challenger fights an interim or an eliminator for his shot at the champion and there's no mandatory since he's won that title. 
I mean, I have addressed this uh, countless times of what happened at all times. And um, there's a reason I need to look at my notes, but every step on Haney, um, he won the title and then he got injured. And then the pandemic hit and then he recovered. And uh, it is very common to give a fighter that is coming back from injury uh, the benefit Voluntary. that he can have another fight. So that's the last title defense he did. Uh, he did uh, Gamboa, I believe. And um, this year he fought Linares. Uh, while the process of the Fortuna, Ryan Garcia, all those things were happening. So I can give you a good timeline, uh, a structured timeline, so you can see we have not in any way broken any rule. And it is not that he has not done any mandatory. He has been the WBC's uh, line of uh, fights that have been structured. So uh, I'm, I'm very confident that we have not done any wrong on the rules. And Haney has not broken any rules as well. How long does the interim champion have to be interim before he's ordered to be the mandatory? It is case by case. We do not like interim championships. Uh, it's a necessity at times. Uh, we have a few interim championships. We have Dillian White in the heavyweight because of everything that has happened also in the heavyweight. And uh, we have uh, this one in, in lightweight. And I believe those are the only two interim championships that we have at the time. Mr. Suleiman, um, I'm not sure if you were asked this question or if you answered this question, but Deontay Wilder made a statement that he said if Fury was to pull out of this fight, that's scheduled October 9th, that he would become champion. Is there any truth to that? No, that's the first I hear. Uh, but uh, there's I, I, no I didn't hear him say that. On 78 Sports, he clearly said that Fury would be stripped and then he would end up fighting for the vacant title and that Fury would have to pay him if he didn't fight in October 9th. I, I heard someone say that, that he, that he said it. I, 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 read it I heard the interview that he did on 78 Sports. He said that Fury would be stripped. Is that the... Case, though, would he be stripped if he doesn't fight on October 9th? It all depends. Uh, uh, we don't speculate. As I've been telling you all the time, uh, something could happen that prohibits him from fighting. So I cannot say right now he will be stripped. Hmm. Uh, yeah. If he gets that injured, if uh, there's something that happens, there's no fight. We would. I mean, I, I never like to speculate. Our rules are very clear. And... Uh, we we handle when when things happen at that time. Was 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 Tyson Fury's behavior after testing positive for COVID, you know, going out and making appearances and hanging out and shopping and stuff, did, was that upsetting to you at all, or what were your thoughts on that? I don't follow much. Uh, sometimes I people send me some things, and uh, it was not clear if that posting was live or from before, but if he was out while having COVID, it's an unbelievable irresponsibility. And uh, that is not talking about a boxer or a champion, sim as a simple person. Uh, we're living through a pandemic that has claimed millions of lives and uh, to be irresponsible when you're sick uh, cannot be uh, acceptable in any form or manner. Now, one thing that's been criticized a lot is the franchise championship, the, the designation. Are you prepared to take a, a look at that and, and maybe assess if that was a good thing to do? Because it seems like it kind of log jams the division a little bit and prevents certain fights from happening. What is your thought on that? Well, oh, I, I feel very confident about the franchise designation. Um, if you see the what has happened with the franchise champions, uh, Canelo used that designation and then uh, last year he decided to go and fight for the super middleweight championship and his goal became to be the undisputed so he has followed that route he's not using the, champ uh, the franchise designation so he's been doing tremendous fights and uh, November 6 will be the last uh, stop and on November 6, unless there's a draw, there will be a, a unified champion, which is very good. Uh, on Teofimo Lopez, it's very regrettable that uh, the thing with Cambosos has dragged so for so long and there's so much uncertainty. 
but um, through through that, we were able to have Teofimo against Lomachenko, then Ryan Garcia Campbell, uh, Haney with Linares, which was a sensational fight. So I don't feel, uh, I understand uh, what the confusion that uh, a new creation comes and the time that it takes to stabilize. But at this time, I mean, if we were doing this in every division and here and there and doing all the things, I would understand uh, people to be upset and to see it, it is not a, a new specific creation as it is. Mr. Adore says, why didn't the WBC order Jojo Diaz Jr. to fight the WBC champ Devin Haney after beating Fortuna? Because uh, Ryan Garcia uh, was publicly given by the WBC support. And uh, he had he was the interim champion. And at that time, uh, he contacted the WBC and said his uh, mental health uh, was fully recovered, that he was going to train, that uh, he wanted to try and see if he can come back and fight. We gave all the time to to all the camps to make a deal and, and Haney to make a deal with whoever he wanted. The, he has expressed uh, countless times the fight he wants is Ryan Garcia, with the public uh, full arena so they can maximize the income for him and his opponent. So uh, we have left a little bit open. Uh, it's a very specific situation. We're not going to go and simply throw away a fighter who had the guts to step up and, and declare his mental status. And uh, that gave a lot of uh, million kids suffering from anxiety, from uh, mental depression, uh, an example that they can come out and address the situation. So we are, we stand by uh, Ryan, we stand by, I'm so proud of Jojo Diaz and uh, the way he represents with his father and his son, uh, the pride of being a champion. And Devin Haney is uh, one of my closest friends as a fighter. And, and I just want them to go into the ring and, and clear that, that division. Now, now, uh, boxing judge Stephen Blee issued an apology for his scoring in the in the Valdez uh, Concacao fight. Um, did you speak with him? Is that something that that you suggested to, uh, for him to do? And did you also suggest him not accepting any fights, championship fights, and going through some training to help him be a better judge? Um, what do, did you have any input on that? No, he he was uh, uh, very brave, and he was so concern. He gave me a call. He sent me the letter, gave me a call. And, uh, and I said, I fully support you. I, I admire your guts to step up. And this is an example of what has to be done to take accountability. He could have hidden and just uh, stayed in the shadows. Uh, I, I applaud him and he's going to go back to basics and uh, do training and certification and when he feels ready to, to be back, we will support him as well. But I, I applaud him. Uh, could have been a night off. I could have been a bad night. We all have bad nights. But he takes it, uh, and, and, and I think that's the right, uh, correct decision to go back, uh, continue, understand what has happened, and go back. There's no way that fight was 17-1-10. Do you think moving forward that, because these scorecards seem to, you know, surface time and time again. Do you think judges should be suspended for a brief period of time and, and get retrained when they turn in scorecards like this? Is that a policy that you may want to implement? Um, we have uh, a very strong ring officials committee and we analyze every single fight and we give them a score of performance. We get feedback, we talk to them, um, Dwayne Ford and his team are doing a sensational job. So we take uh, each fight and we see the scorecards. And then we go back to them and say, please explain. We send them the fight again, a link so they can watch it. What did you see in the third round that everybody else gave to the other fighter? 
and we go back and forth and we talk to the referees about dynamics. So I feel comfortable and the key is to have the officials be accountable. If uh, we pretend nothing happens and just say it's a bad night, uh, it's wrong. We are doing a very good uh, work with remote scoring and that system. So every week, every fight, we have judges from around the world scoring it in a system. Great idea. And, and what we are doing is uh, narrowing with a program that it's called the Q&Q. Uh, quantitative and qualitative scoring. So they are required to score the round on, on no numbers, 10-9, but they also have to score uh, uh, the box in the, in the bottom where it says close, moderate, decisive, or extreme decisive. That's a great, that's a good point. So when we have judges in uh, two degrees of separation, then that's when we start talking to them. What happened that you saw this round close and the other saw it decisive? What happened? How can you see such a difference in evaluation? So it has been helping so much those who are working under this system to fully concentrate and narrow down every single round. So it's it's a working on place. It takes time. And uh, uh, the more judges that get focused into narrowing it to see to, and to give a qualitative or qualitative uh, scoring is going to be something that uh, will continue to have them uniformity in what they see and what they score. Now, but, so let me jump in here because I want to go ahead and walk you through a public petition here for Devin Haney. This is my last Devin Haney question before we move <laughs> on. Obviously, uh, you know, my years dealing with you, you know, one of your phrases is everything is situational. It's uh, case by case. That being said, Devin Haney's case is, is, is very unique. Um, I think we can all agree that Tiafimo, Vasil Lomachenko, Ryan, and Jojo Diaz would be the biggest names on his resume if he ever got to fight him, correct? All right. Now, well, all those uh, names... Linares, Linares is uh, on top of the top, so he, he did beat Linares last time. Yeah, no, no, but he still would be under those names. The rest of those four names are the biggest names he can get. But all those names are unattainable to him. Tio, you made Tio the WBC's undisputed champ. So he can't get a shot at Tio. Obviously, the interim champ is facing Ryan. Respectfully so, Ryan is a big name, popular name. If I were JoJo, I would rather fight Ryan. I'm sure the money's probably better. Uh, Vasil's on the other side of the street and negotiating with Richard Comey. Um, would the WB con consider Devin Haney's case special, unique, and individual and allow him to petition to unify with Maxi Hughes, the IBO champion? I know technically, normally, the WBC doesn't recognize the IBO, but again, this young man's situation is unique. He's 22 years old, been a champion two years, and doesn't get the opportunity to show his skills versus his contemporaries. All the other belts are tied up with Tiafimo, who says he wants to fight him, but obviously is very busy with Cambosos. Yes, uh, the, the IBO is not a sanctioning organization. It's a private company for profit. That is why it is not considered possibility of unifying. Uh, he could defend against him. We would have no issue. I, I'm not sure if he's ranked, uh, but uh, uh, you have to understand that the WBC is not a promoter. And uh, when, when you have ideas like you just brought up, you are coming with a new, fresh idea out of the blue. So you were first demanding other things as a voice in the sport the voice, the boxing voice. <laughs> and now you out of a blue, you bring a new one. So I'm confused. I'm, I'm getting hit all over the place. Devin Haney has been very successful. He has made very good money by being the WBC champion. The last fight, he was criticized heavily, but he defeated Linares. So I'm very proud of Haney. 
He has the road open to do whatever he wants. We have been supporting him heavily. And uh, it's just a matter of time that uh, he's able. He was uh, negotiating with uh, all these names that you have mentioned. So uh, we have supported Devin, and, and I'm very proud of him. He's my friend. He's my nephew's very good friend. And I'm sure he's very young. He's got a long, long way to, to be a legendary champion if he continues to be successful. Now, the so, WBA had mentioned that they're going to eliminate some of their titles. They have uh, mentioned that you know, there's too many of them. What is your take on that? Is that something that WBC may do down the line is try to streamline some of these title belts? Well, it's a much different, uh, Joseph, because we don't have all those titles. We have world champion. We have a few interim champions for specific situations. And we have the franchise designation, which is a completely different scenario. Is if the I, diamond belt gone? Is the diamond belt gone and the gold belt gone? Are those belts gone and the silver titles? Those are uh, trophies. The diamond, the which all the September fight, the May fight. Those are special trophies that give interest to a fight. They're okay. not world okay. titles or they're not championships. I got you. And I got the you. silver is so no is, sanction uh, has to be paid for those for like the Hucho Quan belt or I'm I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing <laughs> it, but uh, you know I know you have a lot of different tribe no. belts. We we pay for that. We we pay for the manufacturing. It's a gift from Mexico and the war, and, and boxing yeah. world. There's no sanctioned videos. Yes. There's it's, a big misconception out there that if I fight for the diamond belt or I'm the silver champion, I have to I have to uh, pay a sanctioning fee every time. But, the silver is different. Okay. The silver is not a, it's not, we don't call it a world championship. It's uh, like in baseball, you have the major leagues and you have the minor leagues. Okay. And you have the triple A. And every sport has, you know, the championship and then different leagues that lead up to the, let me explain to you the structure of the WBC globally. We have uh, 10 continental federations. Uh, each one has uh, a continental championship. Like the NABF is Canada, USA, and Mexico. Okay. But Central America has the countries, South America, Asia, uh, Africa, Europe, the British Boxing Border Control, and the Eastern Bloc, the former Soviet Union countries. Uh, we do have the international championships since 1985, we have the continental Americas since 1988, and uh, it, they're just regional uh, titles for uh, 10 rounds. And what they do, they help uh, newcomers to enter into a structured uh, side of, of the sport with rules, with protection, with medicals. Uh, so it, it gives them, and when you win a, a regional belt, it gives you a lot of pride. And then uh, the perfect example is Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, his first title was a OPBF flyweight championship, Oriental and Pacific Boxing Federation. Then he won the international title. Then he won the WBC world title uh, in flyweight. He lost it. Then he moved all the way to... Uh, was it uh, Super Bantam, I believe? Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he skipped like three and he won the WBC International. So it is something that uh, develops the fighters and then gets them ready to be at the great stage when they become uh, uh, more experienced. We got James Valdez that says uh, here from San Antonio, Texas. Please share with us your thoughts and reasons for Floyd Mayweather's picture to be considered as a representative of the WBC bell and what, and would Manny Pacquiao also be a possibility in the near future? You know, Manny Pacquiao, without a doubt, is a legendary already. Uh, he has all the merits inside and outside the ring. Floyd Mayweather, um, the legacy that he has created through the WBC uh, has been uh, one of a kind. He was the champion in five weight categories, and he always was very proud of the WBC. He's one of those very special fighters for two decades, and that's why the WBC board decided to add 
his face to the championship belt alongside with uh, Mohamed Ali and my father who passed away. Uh, Manny Pacquiao will certainly uh, will be someone that would be very special. Um, I think in 2014 or 15, we changed the belt. So there's the ceramics on the sides. Uh, it's Ali and my father. And then we had, we have in every single weight category, the greatest two champions of that division. So in straw weight, the Ricardo Lopez and, and, um, I'm not, I don't remember the Japanese champion's name, sorry. So we go weight category, they have the two greatest fighters in that division, and then the champion uh, of the division, the current champion, that's his belt. But, but uh, I think uh, additional features like Manny Pacquiao eventually would be interesting, and we will look into it. I, I like that recommendation. Next one is from Jab, left hook that says, Saludos, Don Mauricio, desde California. Échale ganas que... Al cabo, lo, los bocones siempre serán. I, I, I can't wait. So, échale ganas que al acaba. I don't know. A -L -C -A -B -O. A-L-C-A-B-O. How do you pronounce that? Al cabo. Al cabo. That's a, that must be a Mexican one. What, what does that mean? Well, échale ganas means uh, uh, stay strong. The loud mouths will over be loud mouths. Will always be loud. Okay, okay. Gracias, gracias, amigo. You know, I take, I love, I will never step away from a question. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I like confrontation. I don't mind it. As long as it is respectful and it has constructive uh, 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 items, you know, if... If you go to social media on any account, not mine, not yours, any account, wow, the, the messages that you read are horrendous. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you learn to, to understand it, then it's no, no issue. When someone is attacking you, it's systematic and he has no value. But someone comes with a good recommendation, with a good complaint, with a thing that can make you uh, understand and go back we truly cherish people uh, getting to us and, and giving us their feelings and their knowledge. You know, we don't know the rules as fans. When I watch a NFL game and, you know, there's difficult rules or in baseball. I mean, this, this season we, the, we have seen the strangest plays and we don't know all the rules. And it's hard to blame uh, an empire or, or a boxing judge or a referee. You know, things happen very quickly, but we must strive for justice and for safety. So anyone who has a comment, I welcome it. And they can write and we always respond. But just don't, uh, don't remember my mother because that's a very hurtful, like what happened with Canelo. <laughs> Speaking of that, this is the last question uh, from New York. Show Kid says, good morning. What are your thoughts on Eddie Reynoso uh, being as though he has multiple WBC champions that have failed drug tests? How can we hold other champs accountable if these guys are getting away with a slap on the wrist? Also, how do you feel about Eddie's comments during the presser? They were homophobic. Um, I know that Latinos say certain things uh, more loosely than obviously Americans. I don't know if you did hear Eddie Reynoso's comments to Keller Plant during the presser uh, when he called them uh, specifically Maricon. I, I did not see that part of the presser. Um, let me tell you the first part. Uh, it's wrong what, what uh, my friend from New York is saying. It's wrong. Uh, Canelo was found with clenbuterol, okay? That was 2018. 18? 18? I think it was 18. It was the first... Um, Triple G fight. It was the, for the rematch. For, oh, it could have been 17. I think it was 17. Yeah, yeah. maybe 17. So, sorry. clenbuterol, just as fentermine, it's a specific substance, okay? 
And we immediately worked with the Nevada Commission and we had a thorough explanation of clenbuterol. In 2011, there was a soccer World Cup uh, in Mexico for youth, and they did 190 tests, okay, on players. And out of the 190, I believe 130 came back with clenbuterol from all over the world, the kids that were here in Mexico. So clenbuterol is a, a substance that has been challenged with the IOC, with FIFA, Major League Baseball, NFL football, et cetera, et cetera. When that uh, was analyzed thoroughly for the Canelo specific case, the levels that he had on his system, uh, Nevada suspended him for six months, okay? And the year later, WADA made a, a adjustment to the levels of clenbuterol, of what is acceptable and what is over that would become a doping offense. And had Canelo, uh, had WADA have that level at that time, it would not have been an offense. Same thing happened with Meldonium and Povetkin. So this is highly scientific, highly chemistry involved situations, but the specific clenbuterol, uh, for, um, Francisco Vargas was found with clenbuterol before he fought Salido. Mm -hmm. We immediately got on the phone with uh, California. Uh, they on, reviewed, Vargas was in California training. He had a test then. He flew to Mexico to say goodbye to his mother and she cooked a broth uh, with meat he had for dinner. He had lunch next day. That afternoon, the agent came to do the, the sample test. So it was clearly from that uh, meat. And, and California did like 17 tests to him, allowed the fight to go on, and it was a great sensational fight. So every single substance, it is very unfair to Bill Canelo and Eddie Reynoso as offenders when uh, everything is public. And, but again, people do not care to read or to understand, to analyze. It's Mauricio, very easy to attack. Mauricio, okay? so I don't know how good of a president he was because I don't follow boxing, I mean, uh, politics, but, you know, I think it was George Bush that said, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, whatever the saying is. This is the second time that camp test is positive for a banned oh, substance. Listen, no, no, just no, 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 hear no. me out. It is, they did fail. It, it's, you either, cannot, it's either you pass you or you fail. Blame. No, I'm you not can, blaming. I'm not, listen to me first. Join. Don't get into the defensive. You got to listen no. first. You got to listen. Wrong, my friend. No, I'm not saying anything wrong. They failed, yes or no? No. Canelo failed. Valdez failed. That's it. You they failed. They no. failed. That's you that's the only word I'm using. Blame Eddie Reynoso. I'm not You're blaming. Wrong. I'm not blaming Eddie. I'm only using the word failed. Did they fail a test? Yes. Right. Canelo so my, and and Valdez. And, and I just explained thoroughly the 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 clenbuterol situation. And I understand it, but you got to hear my entire it's, sentence so oh, you understand oh, the question. Okay. They both failed. They they weren't they weren't negative. They were positive. So they both failed. They both fight out of the Eddie Reynoso camp. All I'm saying to you as my friend, I consider you a friend. We've been knowing each other for a long time. You've treated me better than any other sanctioning president has. As my friend, public perception is that team continues to pop for diuretics. Don't you think it's a coincidence that the fighters are testing for something that suppresses or helps them in, in, in weight loss? If you Google yeah. clambuterol, yeah, they're not, yeah, they're not diuretics, nest, they're weight loss agents. Uh -huh. It's exactly uh -huh. the weight loss agents. So I used the wrong word. Yeah. They're help they're aids in weight loss. Clambuterol, no. Yes. I have the definition it pulled turns, up. It turns it. it turns fat into muscle. It grows. It makes you it makes well, you no, big. 
I'll, I'll correct Clambuterol, you on that, let, let me read the no 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 sparing. let me read the it's definition sparing, but it uses it helps you utilize fat for energy better and it's muscle sparing so it it, it is anabolic the clambuterol definition does have anabolic properties to it the, the definition clearly states that clambuterol could be used as a weight loss aid because it increases a person's metabolism yeah as well as reducing body fat all I'm saying is moving forward I am your friend that's two different diuretic or diet agents out of you know they're fighters you yeah. know the difference between right and wrong they're training for a fight and they keep popping for something that helps them lose weight i just don't think a third time it's a it'll be to them taking advantage of you is all i'm saying this is two times i'm just no. saying i'm just saying yeah. as your friend I'm, that's how i feel they it's know it's very easy to articulate and, and put it the way you do it are you a lawyer by profession or I'm just good at what I do. I'm not sure how good <laughs> you are in attacking. That's not fair in attacking. Yeah, uh, the, the, the chat, the chat agrees with you, uh, Mr. Suleiman. They don't think they don't think he's a great lawyer. Listen, I am not. <laughs> I am not attacking. I'm just saying. Two it's times. A fair, it's a fair question. I, I have to say. Maybe I'm not question. wording it right. Can you help me word it differently, Joe? I'm just saying. I think. I think. I think. I would word it this way. Can you understand how? It looks suspicious, even if it is coincidental. Is that a fair way to present that yes. question? Yes. Okay. Of course, because human nature is that. We are all suspicious of everything. We are negative. When has someone talked about the clean boxing program in these six years positively? When has someone... Uh, gave us any credit for spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for being out there for canceling fights for do you have any idea what it is to manage a clean boxing program with uh, almost a thousand fighters enrolled the databases the communications the programs of uh, awareness nobody gives any credit of because we don't like to talk about the good things if I go to the movie, I'm not going to go with a, the one that has a saint and a church, but I'm going to go and watch the one that has an axe and a murder in, 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 the, in the poster. We all like violence. We like uh, turn on the news, go to a movie, play a video game. So I understand we are in the attack mode consistently, constantly. So I take it. I understand but it is not fair for Eddie Reynoso to be billed as a cheater or Canelo or Valdez. That's it. Would it, I would it be, yes. Would, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Would it be fair to say in the in the Fentermine case, because I I took a lot of heat for this too. I 100% do not believe it is it is a um, performance enhancer. I actually think it could possibly be uh, worse in performance. If, if you're already lean and you're trying to cut weight, and you're not eating, you're not properly giving yourself the nutrition to recover. I, I, I think it, it may have even hurt Valdez's performance. But because Vada has it, you know, as a banned substance all the time, do you think maybe you should probably go back and have a discussion and maybe look at that list with Vada? And, and you know, because I, I, I appreciate that you grouped in. You you didn't just take Vada. You looked at a, a, a scientist, doctors, which is something I like to do. I don't like to just take someone's word for it. I like to get multiple opinions. And, and, and you know, Vada believes that, you know, out of competition, that, that it's fine to, to uh, have that drug, whatever. Do you think maybe you may have to sit down with Vada and, and, and revise that list? Is that, you know, uh, an option or is that something you may consider? No, I, I don't think so, because that is the purpose of the clean boxing program. We are with VADA. It is the best program out there for boxing. And I would say for all sports. And if there is something, someone using something in that list, out of competition, without a fight scheduled, uh, with a fight schedule, we want, and, and it pops up, we want to know, and then we address it. I'm so, telling so, you. So you, you have the right... Just because it's on their list, you have the right as a sanctioning body to assess the situation the way you see fit. Because the perception out there is because you're using VADA that you have to follow lockstep with that list. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. just because because they don't they don't implement punishments. They just do the testing and they tell you the, the, the substance. But I've said this several times. 
it's up to the sanctioning body and the, and the commission to, to make a determination based off the information they're given. So it is situational, I, I, I still believe. But I think the, the misconception out there is because, you know, you, you use VADA, that because they see that that's banned in and out of competition, they're expecting Valdez, at the very least, to be stripped of the title because of that. And the commission, the commission does follow the VADA protocol, but everyone is expecting the WBC to, you know, follow lockstep with VADA. But can you clarify that that isn't the case? Is that is that a fair thing to assume, or, or is that correct statement? No, we did. We do follow VADA, and we did follow VADA with Valdez. So the substance was found, and we in, intervened and did all the whole protocol. And the decision was to establish a, a, a the punishment as we did, uh, like like uh, my good friend Nestor just uh, said that thing about the court. Um, we did, and we want to find uh, anyone that has a, an illegal substance, regardless when it is. Then we can address it and take a. We have had uh, dopings that have gone from warnings from financial uh, um, punishments uh, and a wide variety all the way to taking the title away. So yeah. we have all, we make the, uh, uh, the results management. So, but, but they do have a stance, Mr. Suleiman, that they believe, in, and uh, Dr. Margaret Goodman herself had said this, she does not believe that stimulants should be taken at any time during training for a fight. So I think because of the conflicting information between VADA and WADA, that's where all, all of this controversy stems from. So I, I, I guess respectfully, my suggestion to you is try to, try to get everyone on the same page so there isn't this confusion because VADA has a list and then it says we adhere to WADA protocol, but then it has a list of the supplements at the bottom. It says these are banned at all times in and out of competition. Just like boxing is, 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 is very critical because everyone does their own thing. It's like the wild, wild west. One commission does one thing. Another commission mm -hmm. does another thing. It seems to be the same way with these drug testing agencies, right? So I, I, I think I would make a suggestion, you know, to try to sit down with VADA and, and try to make it so it's not so different. Like it's more uniform, in other words. I think you need a uniformity. Like a WBC with, banned substance list. Yeah, or, or at least say this, we use VADA for the testing, but it's up to the WBC's sole discretion to determine how we want to handle these situations. Because, you know, f to be fair, VADA just does the testing and they tell you the results of the test. That's all they do. They're, they're, they, they don't, you know, they don't, adhere, handle they don't, they don't administer punishment. Mm -hmm. They don't do any of that. And I think there's a misconception with the public when they have something on the website that says banned at all times, and then they're assuming that you're going to adopt that policy and process as well. Exactly. So that's so I think we need to fix this where there's not this disconnect in the information is what I'm trying to say. And I, I say that with all due respect. Yeah, we have to be more clear. Um, if any of those of the public would go to the website of the WBC and go in the clean boxing program, yeah. that's mm -hmm. the whole protocol. And that's where it says what the WBC does and how we do it, how the results are managed. But uh, we'll we'll do a good press release putting that protocol again, so can people have that? Because yeah. uh, that's that's where this the biggest controversy came, you know. Well, Mauricio, that is all our questions. I, I do want to thank you uh, for coming on. Obviously, um, actually, I guess my last question uh, would be: How does one get? Like how did how did you get involved with Sugar Bird, right? Because the Sugar Bird tournament is a WBC tournament. Absolutely, Sugar Bird is a great uh, platform. Bird Wells, uh, he works uh, in the amateur field. Uh, he works with USA Boxing, and the WBC supports the tournaments. And uh, our intention is to just uh, serve as a platform for kids to continue to have activity and to continue to try to have a, an, an opportunity to move into the ranks of uh, the amateur with a dream to go to the Olympic Games. And then if they cannot succeed in the amateur field, then move on to the professional. But everything starts when you're a kid. So I respect uh, Bird Wells and Sugar Bird and uh, 
the the tournaments that he puts together as a as an organization are tremendous and we are very very strong with with them so if one wanted to put on an amateur show how do they get it sanctioned by the wbc well we work with the usa boxing in in every every country is different so uh, uh, usa let's use usa for the example like we have done the green belt challenge hmm. in california in illinois in new york we have worked with the uh, golden gloves uh, and when we do a green belt challenge we uh, talk to the usa boxing so we get the ring officials and all the structure uh nobody pays a penny the wbc takes care of that uh the kids get uniforms and belts and medals and it's a family great moment so it's a very nice uh, structure that uh, we enjoy very much participating all right so my producer wants you to see our little belt for our little amateur show we do he wants you to grade us on how we made our belt look you should have it green well i tried to you were busy last month remember we tried have, we tried you desperately have, you have our our flags which is good and you know for a kid to get a belt it's beautiful and uh it is just something that motivates them and keeps them moving and they talk in school in the neighborhood with the family and the uncles so i applaud you for doing support of uh amateur fighters so so letter grade give us a letter grade how good did we do with the design do you like it i'll give it a b <laughs> yes yes c plus oh wow c plus. <laughs> Whoa. it needed the green it needed the green it's a green and all the aspects are not very much wbc alike <laughs> so like i needed to make it look more like the wbc <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and I have something in common, Mr. Suleiman. We're both Lebanese. Habibi. Oh, yeah. Fuck. I want to give you a shout out. My, okay. My fellow Lebanese br uh, brethren. And you are in New York as well? No, I'm in I'm in Boston. You don't hear that accent? I'm in Boston. <laughs> you know, my son is going to school in uh, Northeastern. Oh, wow. It's a great school. So Criminal I will... Justice? Criminal Justice? No, he's uh, computer science. Oh, nice. great. Excellent. He's doing, he's doing great and he's very happy. So when I visit him, I'll give you a call and we go have uh, some good... Uh, Kibbe. Kibbe. And <laughs> Charles. <laughs> yep. Oh, very nice, Joseph. All um, right. Well, Mauricio, man, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you as always, man. And keep fighting the good fight. Excellent. Have a great weekend. Take care. All right. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Mauricio Suleiman.